Dividend investors, bonjour, this is Mike Hiru, founder of Dividend Stocks Rocks and passionate investor. I'm here to help you invest with conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Speaking of which, a lot of retirees uh, have been devastated by last week's news where Ryokan, after telling us over and over again that their dividend was safe, they slashed it by 33%. And, and I can feel the pain and it's kind of funny because I've discussed Ryokan two months ago and in my top three REITs and it was not part of my top three Canadian REITs actually. It was uh, a warning telling you that you might not want to go into Ryokan right now. So let's listen to what he has to say back then. You're putting your money at risk, you're putting your retirement at risk. And this is why Ryokan was not loved at DSR, not this year, but last year and the year before. So since 2018, we were like, meh. Yeah, my opinion on Ryokan at that time was eh. Uh, to be honest, at DSR, the company was rated as an old, so rated three, uh, meaning that it was not the worst rate ever, but it's not the best either, but it had a dividend safety score of two, meaning that you should not expect a dividend increase, and actually you should not be surprised by a dividend cut. Uh, now today, I'm not making a video about how painful it is to get uh, Ryokan slashing its, its dividend cut. I wanted to share with you my views of Ryokan and why I made this statement two months ago, way before the dividend cut, while pretty much all bloggers, financial analysts, and the CEO were coming out saying the dividend was safe. Uh, when I look at any of my holdings, I'm using three red flag rules, I would call them that way. Uh, the first one is listen to the market. The second one is look for an absence of dividend growth. And the third one is look at the dividend triangle. And we're going to look at those three rules with Ryokan as an example. So let's start with the listen to the market rule. Uh, I know if you are managing your portfolio, you think that you're the smartest guy in the room and that you think that you can beat the market. That's pretty much the, the whole purpose, right? You want to have control over the, your portfolio and you think that you can do better than if you end your money over to financial advisor and so on. However, I don't think that the entire market is filled with dummies, right? It doesn't make sense. Uh, portfolio managers, pension plan managers i think they're pretty smart they have cfas and bunch of resources to make their research and when they stop loving a stock maybe it's a sign that you should look into it a little bit further what i like about ryokan is this rule is not a deal breaker and ryokan is showing a great example for that so if you look back on this chart actually uh back in 2008 during the financial crisis the yield went over what it happened in March, telling you the market thought, eh, Ryokan is gonna have a hard time during this financial crisis, lots of bankruptcies are gonna kick in and they're gonna cut their dividend. Well, it didn't happen. So it tells you that a high yield is a sign for a potential dividend cut, but it's not automatic. So what it tells you, it's an, investi an, an invitation for investigation. Uh, what happened back in 2008 is Ryokan showed the world that they were a very strong rate and they were they had ample liquidity and they were able to go through that crisis. So the yield went back down. And then back in March, more concern rises. And especially right now, whenever you have a company that is offering you a yield over 6%, uh, there's no free lunch in finance. There must be a reason. There must be some risk. And you have to go a little bit deeper. So let's go a little bit deeper and let's look at the absence of dividend growth or the dividend growth trend for Ryokan. When you look at the first graph, it actually uh, looked pretty nice, right? It's like a nice escalator, pretty stable. Every two, three years, you have a dividend increase um, that has been going on since 2008. So over the past 12 years, you got what, like one, two, three increase. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't look that bad, right? But if you look at the 
percentage of dividend increase, this is where it hurts a lot. In my previous video of my top three Canadian REITs, uh, I've discussed that as well, saying, you know what, if you are into a job interview and your future boss is telling you, my friend, I'm very proud of you and I'm going to give you, I'm going to offer you 7% paycheck increase. And then you're just like, yeah, it's a jackpot. And then he adds, but it's going to happen over the next 12 years. Are you really going to settle for this job or you're, like, you're going to look for another one? Well, this is exactly what's happening with Ryocan. Over the past 12 years, they offered 7% increase in total. I don't even know what it means in annualized dividend growth, but I sure know that it's a lot less than inflation and your dividend is actually getting eaten up by inflation. It's eaten up alive. Uh, so basically, if you have been holding the company, the, the stock for the past 10 years, uh, the results overall total return were fine before the pandemic that I must give that it, it, it's still rock and still a, a very well managed REIT and so on. But the dividend growth was not there either. Uh, so this again is a not, it's not a deal breaker, but it's another sign that you might want to look into it and see what's really happening. Especially if you look at the past 10 years, we ran into the perfect economy. So consumer had jobs, they were confident, they were spending, interest rate were low, the job uh, market was booming. So everything was there for any company that has a strong business model to thrive. How come Rearcan didn't thrive? Let's look a little bit further now and establish what's happening with their dividend triangle. So first, the dividend triangle is a concept that I use to start any of my financial research. It's basically looking at three pillars. First one is revenue growth because you want a company that is thriving, growing, that is as a competitive advantage. Basically, you want to see growth. Second one is earnings per share. So you want a company that is making profit. In this specific case, we cannot use EPS because we have a REIT and earnings per share doesn't matter when you're looking at a REIT. So we're going to look at FFO per unit, from from operation per unit. And the last one is the dividend growth because when you have a company that is striving and growing and it's making more profit than ever, well, you would like to have management thinking of you a little bit and share the wealth with shareholders with dividend growth right? Uh, we already covered dividend growth. It's not that great. So let's look at revenue and funds from operation. So what do you see here since 2008? You see good growth for revenue and funds from operation. So you're maybe thinking, well, this REIT is doing well, you know, uh, it's expanding, it has more properties, it's generating more revenue and more funds from operation. So it's look good. The thing is, one of the things that Ryokan does to finance its project is that it issues more units. Whenever they do that, it means that they need to pay more dividend year after year. So it's kind of a debt in another other sense because the market is expecting the company to continue to pay their dividend. So when you look at the past 10 years or so, shares increased by 30%, which is not the end of the world, but then again, it tells you that Ryokan year after year has to pay a little bit more in dividend than it used to, even though they didn't increase their dividend. So what you must really look at, it's not really revenue or total funds uh, from operation, but rather the FFO per unit. And then I went into the financial statement to get those numbers. And then what you can see from 2014 to 2019, you have a growth rate of 2.5% per annum. So annualized growth rate of FFO per unit is at 2.5%. It's not much, right? You have a big peak in 2015, but remember that during those years, they were selling assets as well. They got off the retail market in the US at the same time between this period, between 2014 and 16. But what you see here is that the growth isn't that spectacular. And actually, next year, when we're going to look at 2020 FFO per unit, it's likely going to be lower than $1 per 87 cents. So all of this to tell you that if I look at what the market tells me about Ryokan, if I look at their dividend growth perspective, and then I look at their dividend triangle, it's not an automatic sell, but 
It's definitely not enough for me to fall in love with this kind of read. And then you're gonna tell me, but Mike, what about the yield? Well, there you go. A lot of investors, they tell me, but Mike, I like the yield, the yield is generous and the dividend is safe, so I'm keeping my shares and I'm feeling good because I cash my money every month or every quarter, and this is what is investing about, is having cash in your pocket. And then you get news like this, like Royal Can last week, that they just tell you that the cold art cash, the guaranteed money that you thought was going to happen every single month, just got chopped by one third. You know, it's just 33% poof going out. And, and now that it has happened, what do we do from there? Do you keep your share or is it a good time if you don't have Ryuk in your portfolio to jump in and add this, this one? Because most of the time when you look at dividend cutters, once they cut their dividend, everything was already priced because when they did the announcement, the stock went down by like 4%, so it's not the end of the world. So when the announcement is done, a lot of research will tell you that dividend cutters over the next 12, 24 months will outperform the market because usually there's an overreaction. The thing is, you can do it, and this could be a good play, and it would be an in and out, but make sure that you track this company very closely. Uh, I am not too much into in and out trades. I like to buy stocks and forget about them for like 5, 10, 20 years. But let's look at this perspective. Is it possible for me to think about buying Ryokan right now? Uh, Ryokan is one of the largest and most regarded REITs. Well, it was until last week anyway. And it is 90% concentrated in retail REITs, uh, retail properties, sorry. So when you think about it, do you think that the future of retail is in brick and mortar? I'm not saying it's all going to disappear, I don't think that. But from what I've seen so far this year and how the pandemic just brought us whew, 10 years in the future, I'm starting to think that brick and mortar uh, retailers are going to suffer for a while. And you know what? Thing is, I think that Royal can think the same thing because now they're trying to diversify into offices and to resid residential properties. So what we see here is we still have a very solid retail property mix, but then again, you will always, even if it's like 10 or 15% of, of, your, of your tenants that are going to struggle and eventually close and not pay their rent, it's going to be hard to find other tenants to replace them. And 10, 15% when you're not growing that fast in terms of funds from operation from units, it's, it's not a good news either because it's going to be very hard for the company to thrive, even if it's only 10 to 15% uh, percent because they're a huge giant and the growth will not be there. It will just be enough to just pause everything and you won't have your dividend increase back for a long time. Now, let's end this video on a more positive note. Let's talk about their projects. Uh, management knows very well that retail properties may not be the future, even though they're anchored by grocery stores or you have super strong tenants like Walmart or Costco or, or Canyon Tire they will find more growth with apartments and condos, which makes sense. They are heavily concentrated in, in Toronto. About 50% of their, uh, their properties are in this area. Um, it's booming. I'm not going to say otherwise. It's a great place to be, but there's two things that I would like to see before I jump in. The first one is keep in mind that every time a REIT has made a strong bet on a specific region, it could get hurt because it, it will either be a home run, which I think it's going to happen with it, with this case. I think that Toronto is a great place to invest versus um, what happened in a few years ago with Boardwalk, for example, Boardwalk REIT that was heavily concentrated in Alberta and was basically surfing on the oil boom. Uh, when the oil boom becomes a bust, the company had a hard time finding tenants for their apartments. I'm not too sure it's gonna happen now in Toronto, but at the same time, you can be worried that it's over. the market is overeating. The second thing that you need to consider and you have to be sure that it happens is you don't wanna make, you don't want to see oversupply. When you look at pure apartment REITs right now, a lot of them are uh, haven't recovered from their March drop. And, and even though they show great rent collection and, and their FFO has not been touched too much, 
the market is worried that there will be oversupply of apartments and condos. And what happens then? Well, whenever you're about to renew, you cannot increase it too much. So your growth power is diminished. And then if you want to have new tenants for your brand new towers, you might have to run some promotions, offer like rent for free or like other uh, utilities or any kind of other promotion that will cost you money and that will, again, reduce your potential for growth and stronger funds from operation. So with those two things combined and the fact that they still have the weight of 90% of their business right now is still retail, I'm not too keen about buying Royal Can. If you want to do it as a play money uh, and then you think, you know what, it has been hit so hard. The dividend right now is safe. This one is safe, that's for sure. Don't expect for an increase the next year because they need that money to fund their projects. But the dividend will be safe. The yield is still uh, is still very good. If it's new money that you put it in and then you just say, hey, I have like a 5% I want to waste or gamble a little bit, this could be a smart move because it still has a strong management place. And I think that the division, the, the decision to cut the dividend was smart. But then again, it's not a long-term, like close your eyes and sleep on it forever uh, type of deal. You'll have to follow her again quarter to quarter. So now I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you made that far, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It helps growing my channel. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to put ads anytime soon on it, even though I'm growing. That's not my purpose. My purpose is really to help you invest with conviction. And until my next video, stay invested.